Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. On this episode, I'm talking about a car that I used to drive. I actually drove an Oldsmobile briefly, and we're talking about Oldsmobiles with laser guns. Uh, talking with comics creator Mike Moman. Moman, than you or anybody else. Mike, welcome to the uh, podcast. Thank you for jumping in and joining. No, thank you so much for having me on this, and thank you for the very warm um, introduction. Uh, I sometimes joke about that as well when people ask me how to pronounce my name. So, I, uh, so it's, it's full disclosure. I stole that from you because that's how you told me how to say it. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, now you have this series, Oldsmobiles with Laser Guns, uh, which we'll get into. That's a that's a, such a great title. Um, I'm curious about. What connected you with comics and storytelling? How did you decide that you wanted to go this route in your life? Okay, so this takes me back a long time. Um, first of all, growing up with ADHD, parents don't really want to acknowledge that you have ADHD back when I was a little kid. Um, it was always difficult for me to focus on one thing or another. I was great with writing stories with creating worlds creating characters but never had the ability to focus long enough to put pen to paper to make something that was actually tangible um but i found at a young age that if i was to incorporate images pictures create the dialogue the narrative with images it would mix things all over the place and i'd get full you know five ten page comic strips written even at a young age so i, I knew that there was this connection but there was never an encouragement for it. It could have been because, you know, sometimes I'd draw in boobies in those. So, you know, when you're a little kid, right. you get in trouble for that. Um, but um, th there was never really that uh, nourishment, uh, nurture in um, with what I was doing in comics. So, so I, I kept that kind of on the wayside and of course you're always your worst critic so despite taking art classes i always thought what i did was terrible and that my stories were terrible because you never judge yourself in in a holistic manner you always look at it from one point or another um it wasn't until more recently in my life did i look back and and now with a, a more recent uh uh diagnosis was hey you know what you probably have adhd here did i realize that this was a superpower i have not been harvest or harnessing mm -hmm. um in that ability that that i can use all of these skills that I've created all of these um little bits of of abilities to create something that's amazing that that people could appreciate and and that's where this kind of came to um, so the, the passion for comics was, was always there dormant mm -hmm. and there were always comic books that I liked, not, not in the same degree as my friends, like my, my friends love superhero comics, but for me, um, actually the, the, even the pinnacle comic for me that, uh, kicked me off was when I was uh, quite young in an old used bookstore with my father. And I actually have a copy of it um, right behind me. Uh, Hard Boiled Defective series. Uh, Hard Boiled Defective. Mm. Um, oh, gosh. Stories. Hard Boiled Defective Stories. That's Charles Burns. Mm -hmm. um, that was the, the first graphic novel that really struck me uh, with the style and everything. Uh, and, and my, my parents being Protestant Christian, when they, they found out that I had uh, bought something that atrocious, uh, I think my father's exact words were, I threw it away. That was unnecessary. Nice. That was nice. it. Yeah. I, and I just thought it was unfair. And it was the first comic that I ever read, re wrote, read back to back. Loved it. Loved the art style, the black and white. Um, and then that's where in more independent European comics, those were, that was what I was drawn to. Um, mm -hmm. so maybe with the, 
my, well, my friends are like superhero comics. I, I think that's where I was drawn more to the Punisher because he wasn't so much a superhero. He was just a dude with guns. Um, and a lot of the dialogue, I think um, maybe uh, a lot of people don't uh, recognize the um, narrative that was in there where he was constantly talking about uh, basically PTSD his, mm-hmm. his the whole series and uh the armory was actually one of my favorite series by punisher where um it was just him talking about a gun each page was a different model of gun and then it would be a little narrative of his life and story and that was something so truly unique to me that's where my passion was with the the story building with graphics and and not about something that was super yeah so yeah. that that brings me to my passion where where now i've put everything together and i knew from the get-go that i wasn't going to be this I, I hate to use the air quotes comic creator mm-hmm. i have a lot of friends i have peers who write comics and then they hire other people to do their art i write the scripts i do the art myself i don't care how bad it is i it's my baby and i get to say that i did that and i created that it might take a little bit longer than if i was to just hire someone from nicaragua to do it for me but i i feel good about myself and saying hey my name's plastered all over there kind of thing yeah Yeah. uh (laughs) any any particular inspiration behind oldsmobiles with laser guns anything about how the story came together that you'd like to share. Sure. Well, you yourself said that you used to drive an Oldsmobile. Mm-hmm. And what one was that? I think it was an Achieve, uh, I think. And how old were you when you were driving an Oldsmobile? Somewhere in my mid-20s, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Any memories you wanted to share about that? Um, I remember that there was this really interesting thing that it would do, and I'm not quite sure why, uh, but sometimes it would smell like maple syrup. <laughs> Maybe you got yours from Canada. Maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> um, sorry, it's it, that's funny to me being a Canadian. So I, <laughs> um, I, my parents had an old Oldsmobile when I was a kid. I grew up in the backseat of an Oldsmobile, essentially. They would mm-hmm. drive around everywhere, and I would always be in that Oldsmobile. And um, memories of, oh, when I got to sit in the passenger seat, that car was a spaceship to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so now, that, that was an 83 Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra, navy blue, just like the Oldsmobile in my comic. Nice, that is... Nice. The comic I grew up with as a kid. Now, the concept of Oldsmobile's laser guns didn't come into fruition until I was about 15. Um, I had recently picked up the guitar. I started playing music. And um, I wanted to write a song. One of my friends sat me down and said, you know what, you just got to think of something that's funny. And put the words together. And I was like, Oh, my parents' car, Oldsmobile, Oldsmobile's with laser guns. I wrote this song. Uh, Do you have a chance to hear the song? Well, sure, by all means. <laughs> no, so, no, I um, I sent you the link. Sorry, did you have a chance to hear it? Oh no, no, I'm sorry. I thought you were getting ready to sing. I was going to be. Excited. Oh no. <laughs> no, no, it, it, it's early in the morning. Uh, right now, I sound like Barry White, not uh, the good type. Not a good time to sing for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to throw a link for the, the song for anyone that wanted to hear the By more recent means. recording of it. By yeah. Um, so, so at 15, I wrote the song. Loved it. My band played it. E- even um, last Sunday, my band uh, got together and we played the song again. So this has been a band that I've had for a very long time, a punk band. And... Um, at 15 with this song in hand i'm like this song's narrative the story is just so good mm-hmm. i need I, I need to do something more with this and my adhd was tingling 
Um, and I started drawing a little comic. And I think I got maybe five or six pages of it. And then I redrew it and redrew it and redrew it. And there it lied. It just, you know, I got caught up with something else. I didn't know how to make comics at the time. I was just drawing panel per panel. I, I didn't have any concept of that how to plan things out that I had to write a script that I should have thumbnailed things. I was just drawing every panel on the seat of my pants, ready to go. And that bothered me for almost my whole life, how I started this comic and nothing came of it. So I had drawn other superhero comics for fun as a kid. And, you know, they, they would always just do tit around Mm -hmm. Um, and then something, something came to me while I was waiting on changing over into a new job. I was, uh, uh, leaving, I believe this would have been probably my last job in law and then going into the, the, um, not-for-profit sector where where I started actually thinking about these things that I never pursued and instead had pursued a career in law mm -hmm. um, and then getting into the not-for-profit sector all of a sudden well why well, had spare time again and I had a lunch break I could do my own thing during and and that's kind of where I was able to, to take this and say to myself, Mike, this is something you were so passionate about. You wrote a song about this. You, you started a comic book. Why don't you finish this? Um, and I thought about it. I thought about um, the characters that would be involved with this. And, and when I, when I realized, okay, how to have a cast change and how to have a, a better dynamic rather than just, uh, you know, three stoners, let's, let's make this a full, Full out story. So, um, you know, instead of being just nothing, now they actually have character development. They have uh, motivation, drive. And when I established that, boom, it was full speed ahead. I threw that car into hyperdrive and it was blasting through outer space. Nice. Nice. Now, now, as far as putting together the book, anything that you'd like to share about the kind of creative process that you go through? Mm. Yeah, I'm, some people may not like this. Um, I love daydreaming. If I just daydream about it, when I'm driving in my car, I will just listen to the sound of the road and kind of pay attention to the road, but daydream, think a little bit about that. Uh, before going to bed, I will daydream, conceptualize things that I like, and I take to write down notes. When mm. I have a chance to just kind of uh, drift off and to think about things, um, quiet time to myself, that's where the ideas flow. And sometimes the ideas are so good, I have to stop whatever it is I'm doing and just write. Oh man, like, do I, do I ever write? Let me, you're going to be the outside of my partner. You are the first person I'm sharing this with. Okay. Oh, okay. My nice. first Oldsmobile's Laser Guns book, and I'm talking like details, everything, layout, uh, story arc ideas, um, continued, continued. First conversation with, can't share that with you because that's not going to be for a while. <laughs> nice, nice. So you you are definitely a planner, uh, the, which is weird because I, I'm not really. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever really been, but then just when you be, when you become passionate about something, you really find those things that work good. Mm -hmm. And um, going by the seat of my pants works great for a lot of things. But when, when you're trying to make a story, and be, because of um, uh, with Ultimobiles and Laser Guns, time travel is involved with this. So I have to have consistency between issue one and the planned issue 25. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So I, I need to make sure that everything works with each other so that there's no continuity errors. 
Nice. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, um, if I'm a listener out there and I kind of want to know maybe the elevator pitch or what I would expect from Oldsmobiles with laser guns, what would be uh, something that you would want to share to sort of get me intrigued? Well, you know, it's a simple story. It's about three friends who find an Oldsmobile in the back alley of a bar. They pop inside for some reason, and they're blasted into another galaxy. Now they're trying to make their way back home. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, they're all idiots. None of them are space wizards. None of them are the chosen ones. None of them have any special abilities whatsoever. They're just a bunch of guys that were looking out to have a good time one night, and instead, bam. And now um, they have no idea what they're doing. Uh, the space cops are trying to kill them. They have no idea why. Uh, the pizza places all refuse to deliver to outer space, and they can't figure that out either. So they're really out of their element. Um, and now they're caught in the middle of a space, a galactic space war, because of course they have to be caught in the middle of a galactic space war. That's just how things roll when you're in a space opera. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. But it's a it's a sci-fi comedy, but it's not like slapsticky with uh, with a whole bunch of um, shtick and uh, spoofs. It's 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 comedy that's built from the conversation that naturally occurs. These are three guys that you know, or maybe you are one of them when you hang out with your friends. It is the the sauce that keeps you together. So these th three friends that you listen to them talk to, you're like, these guys do not like each other. Mm -hmm. No, they are best friends. That's their level of conversation, where if they're not rising on each other, something is wrong. Nice, nice. So it sounds like characters I can get into and sort of listen to and uh, friendship there along with adventure and some really interesting kind of science fiction uh, elements as well. I try to keep the science fiction as as engaging to science fiction fans as possible so that, that there is a respect for that fantasy science fiction that's happening. Where on the, the, the car side, I try to keep that as appealing to people who have those passions for cars. I, I, I'm not even a car guy, but I've had people that love Oldsmobiles and those classic G bodies from General Motors come up to me and they were just like, you had me at Oldsmobile. Tell me yeah. everything. <laughs> does this have a rocket E8 engine in it? And I'm like, it does now. Um, which is a, a V8 engine that some of the Oldsmobiles had. It, the same one that was in the uh, original Adam West Batmobile. Oh, nice. So, nice. Okay. yeah, yeah. They, these are all things that I found out. Because, again, I'm not a car guy, but people that love cars that have been reading my comic have been educated. And, oh, gosh, are the, the Oldsmobiles fans? They are some of the coolest people that I've met so far. Um, and, but then the comedy side, it, it's, it's really that natural uh jokey side and, and there's a little bit of everything with those character development you have the character of mike who's dealing with insecurities and um his new realization of being in a leadership position that he doesn't feel he deserves uh you have nathan who's dealing with uh depression and self-loathing uh while expressing a hatred to other people instead because of that self-hatred as he's overcoming um some addictions uh, you have Bryce in the back seat, who he's just an ass. Uh, but <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not his fault. He's the most attractive one of the group, and uh, he actually has a very uh, built up character arc that that is teased in issue one, but that's not going to go into uh, for the next couple of series. But but again, it, it's um, some hidden things that he has in his life that he's too afraid to discuss. Um, cause he doesn't trust his friends enough cause he's just scared that everyone's going to hurt him all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but Bryce does have the, the first earliest love interest because of the ship's computer, Jenny, he is madly in love with Bryce. Nice. Nice. Um, so a bit of a love story as well. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> Uh, well, if I'm a listener out there and I want to find out more, if I want to see more about you or the book, um, any particular web spaces, social media spaces, or anything like that, where I might go? 
Oh, just uh, the website, oldsmobilescomic.com. Um, if you sign up for the newsletter, you can get a free copy of issue one and two uh, sent right to your email right away. So and that's where I'm at. Like it's, Number three is about to be published. So uh, you would have all the comics that are available sent to your email just by signing up to my newsletter. And that, again, is through, through the website, oldsmobilescomic.com. Awesome, awesome. Well, Mike, I appreciate the time. I appreciate the conversation, the creativity, including Oldsmobiles. And uh, glad to have you back anytime to talk about the series as it develops. Jason, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you.